So you're enjoying your sim game. Probably thinking a button box would most definitely add to the immersion. And would relish the satisfaction of creating your own from scratch. In this video, we'll do just that. If you can copy and paste, you'll do it just fine. the things we will need. Record USB cable or micro. Along with some wires, I picked up this Plosivo kit from Amazon. Came with six colors, plenty enough for all the projects I have in mind. Some heated inserts. Some resin flux paste, along with some Tenor. Light emitting diodes or LEDs. And a crimping set. And of course, jumping to itself. Most importantly, make sure you get the ratcheting version of the crimping tool. And a pair of wire clippers. An assortment of N4 screws. Along with a hot glue gun and maybe one stick. Also, resistors. In this build, we'll be using 20 resistors and 10K resistors. For this build, we will be using mostly two pin switches as well as one three pin switch. And here's our 3D printed enclosure. Links to the SDL file will be in the description below. And first we need some 95.5 solder and soldering iron. This is my portable soldering iron that I got from Radio Shock when Radio Shock was a thing. And a set of Torx heads, specifically the T6 Torx for the screws. So it starts with a sketch after using my digital caliper and measuring all the components, switches and stuff. I went into Shaper 3D and created a layout I felt most comfortable with for the prototype button box. And after some playing around and tinkering around, this is what I came up with for prototype one, two, or I think it's three. I think this is three. Yep. And here we have the final print of the button box in PLA black using the Ender 3 Pro. And we're going to start with putting in the switches. Firmly, you don't have to be super tight. It is 3D printed plastic. Just want it snug. I'm going to use one reposition switch on, off, on.
and this switch is going to be powering two LEDs and two pins. All right, so here's the prototype and how we're going to wire it for power coming into the middle. All the switches coming out to ground, going down to the 220R resistor, which leads into the positive side of the LED. And then from the negative side down into the lead or the pin, the digital in, and also it's going to be ground connected. So we're going to have digital pins two through seven, as well as ground coming from the negative side of the LED. And for that three position switch in the prototype, I used the on on switch. But what it did was always keep at least one LED on at all times. Here we have the LED. We have two pins, one shorter, one longer. The longer one is the positive, with the shorter one being the negative side of the LED. As also, there's a flat side on the negative side that you can see on this, if you can see on the screen. So let's put it on these little LEDs and we're gonna hot glue them together. I had this hot glue gun laying around the house. There's enough space to feed two wires inside each hole in the switches. So what we want to do is kind of like an electrician bends their EMT conduit pipe. We're going to use the switch itself to bend the wire so we get a point where we can pinch and close it up. And that's basically how we're going to be setting up the wires. And on this end, we have a two point connector. On the first switch, it gets a two point connector on power. Now I picked up this nice placebo box for my wiring projects. Inside came with quite a few colors. Nice and easy to work with. But what we're going to do is just measure up the wires into each individual space. So that way we can know how much we need. Yes, I am using the clippers that came with the Ender 3 and they're pretty good and I still haven't yet to get myself a wire strippers yet. Just be careful not to cut the wires up all the way. We're going to be stripping both ends and shaping it kind of like a N. Put the wire in on both ends before we pinch. All right, so here we are, fully soldered. We have the power coming in all the way through across the middle of all the switches. And then we also have 220R resistors coming from one side, from the other side of the switch into the positive end of the LED. And if you can see in the beginning, I started off with adding a piece of wire in between the switch and the 20, 220R resistor, but then I realized I could just go straight. It took a chance. So at the beginning of this video, you know, it worked out. So from now on, I can just put the resistor straight from the switch into the positive side of the LED. I know you saw the wire harness in the corner there, so this is how I made it. I basically measured out from pin 2 all the way across to the negative side of the LED, making sure I had a little extra in between. And you want to strip one end, that end will be for the crimp. There goes the harness. Now I'm sizing up the harness to make sure I have enough to reach all the way across. 
and I wired it all in. This is going to be the negative. I measured it from the, the ground pin. All a little extra across. Always better to have more than less. And here we have the two point connector on one end. And I'm going to place it in and measure where we're going to put in the 10k resistors on this one ground cable. There you go. Bothered one side of the resistors onto the ground cable. There we have it. 10k resistors all attached to the bottom end of the negative lead. Alright, so we're ready for heat insert. M2H4 heat inserts. So we're gonna put inside, put our case together. Now if you could pick this up on the screen, if I could get this to focus for you guys. I don't even know what to call it, like let's stub out. And it's gonna be flat and that's the end you wanna put in to be able to fit right into the hole. I sized them up pretty good. Here I have my trusty Radio Shack soldering iron. And what I'm gonna do is put it on the lowest possible setting without having it cut off. One thing you do wanna take note here is to make sure it's straight, apply no pressure. Just let the heat guide the insert in and keep it level. Make sure it's straight. And you're gonna feel like the piece is just eating the insert. And here we go, next side. And I picked up this case here. 1440 pieces. We're gonna use the M4 by six screws. See, it'll be wonderful. They work wonders. All right, so now we have the guide for the Pro Micro, and we're just gonna put a little bit of hot glue on the edges to hold it in place for us. Nothing too drastic. Okay, now we're ready. Put the case together. Now remember, the blue harness is for pins two through seven. Red is for raw, black is for ground. And there we have it. We're ready to program our button box.